Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Prep for Wave Week. It is day four, sales day. If you haven't tuned into the other interviews, you still have Francesco Oniti, who's talking about upselling photo memories. And then you have Nikki Roush talking about authentically selling. It is a great day, like all the other days here at Prep for Wave Week. And we are in the home stretch. So uh, first and foremost, if you don't know me, thanks for being here. My name is Rita M. Perez. Uh, let's just head on over to the next slide where you can find out a little bit more about me. But this session really is about setting up your sales funnel. And I know we talk a lot about your marketing funnel, but we don't really necessarily talk about the sales portion of your business. And I really wanted to focus in and hone in on that because when we're talking about wave season, you need to have that sales funnel really buttoned up, especially with the influx of business. Now, I don't know what your business is going to look like, but I know a lot of travel advisors, they are swamped during quarter one of the first year. And so to make it a little bit more manageable is why I've been hosting this week all along. And so we're going to dive more in into setting up that sales funnel. But first, if you are new around here, I just actually celebrated my 13th uh, business birthday for the travel agency this month. And um, so I have seen a lot of the ins and outs of the industry back in, I'd say late 2020, but definitely in March of 2021, I decided I wanted to also do some mentorship and education with the industry. And that started with the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. So many of you know me from that side of things and uh, just have been enveloped in my world. This is actually the third Prep for Wave week. So this, I would say Prep for Wave week is like the second big business baby that I had with the first one being the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur podcast coming out. And so I've helped and mentored different people within the industry and outside of the industry with their marketing efforts through strategy and consultations. So at the end of this, I don't want this to be a surprise or anything. There is going to be an invitation to work with me a little bit later on. But first, let's get to the goods of everything. Uh, now, <laughs> really what I would love to say is that everything should lead to sales within your business. Everything does not lead to sales in your business, uh, nor should it either. So that's why you see on this slide, it says nearly everything should lead to sales. You are in business not to like have this fun like side hobby. This is not a hobby. You have invested time. You've invested money. You've gotten licenses. You've probably worked with lawyers to draft up agreements like this is a business and a business needs sales. And so how do you get those sales within the funnel? So uh, I like to like peel back a little bit before we dive into. So here talking about the purpose of sales, number one, support your income. Again, you are in business to generate some sort of revenue. Whatever your goals might be, that is all individual. I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to say like, you need to earn six figures, seven figures. That is not the lifestyle that a lot of people want, but there are a lot of people that do want that. So what really fits in and supports your income? Your sales also need to sustain your business. Going back to, you can't be in business if you're not getting any sales for your business. It also, the sales also in your business help you plan for growth and impact. So if you want to do more, bigger, better within your business, or if you're going to, you're going to learn this a little bit tomorrow in Sarah Young's presentation about building wealth. If you want to use your tool, your business as a tool to build wealth within your personal life, you need to have sales in order to support that growth and impact. And then last but not least, and I think maybe we might overlook this a little bit, is that you need to be able, or your business allows you to empower other people through your zone of genius. Whatever it is, your expertise, whatever niche it is, whoever it is you serve, you know, and you have specific skill sets that you can utilize that a lot of other people don't have. 
Like if I were to talk to a, a group of different people that I know within the industry, I know somebody works with empty nesters. I know somebody that works with autistic families. Somebody else works with people who want to go to biblical areas around the world. Some people just want sun and fun. Those are four very different and specific areas and very different types of people that you're going to be working with. But because you serve them, you know how to kind of bridge the gap between what they want and what is possible. And that is your zone of genius. And people want that. A lot of people don't have that. And so part of sales is also this service and providing this service to other people that they're not able to achieve on their own. I know sales kind of gets muddled up sometimes with marketing. So I wanted to touch on really what the differences were. So marketing is really to get you visible. People have to know you in order to do business with you. They have to know that you exist. They have to know what services you offer. And that's what marketing does. It makes you visible. It gets eyeballs on your business. It gets eyeballs on you so that they know, oh, I either have this problem and I don't know where to go, but now I do, or, oh my gosh, I didn't know that this ha ha that I had a problem for this, and I should be going to this person when I'm ready to solve that. Sales is taking that to the next level. So now that they know you, they're like, okay, how do I work with you? Because you are exactly the type of person that I see working with this, and I know that's best fit for it. So it's really taking that awareness into a more serious and more deeper level which is getting them to hand over cash to you pretty much. Not uh, physically most of the time, especially within the travel business, but it is sealing the deal. And that's through a signed contract, signed agreement, and they've paid your invoice. So again, marketing goes into where you are finding people to work with or potential people to work with, or even potential people that can refer you to other people who might need your services. It gets people to find you. So you can find people both in person or you can find people virtually. So um, I've been talking to somebody about this where what, who is your niche? Like what kinds of events are specific to your niche? Like if you have golfers, what types of events are golfers going to be going to? What types of events are business coaches going to be going to? Like it's all very different. I remember there was a post uh, in one of the Facebook groups recently that had mentioned something about, I, I'm going to do a five minute pitch in front of a group of people. Why should I tell them to use a travel advisor? And I commented, I'm like, well, the answer is going to vary very differently. If this is a group of moms, if this is a group of financial advisors, or if this is a group of business owners, because there's like three different strategies on how you can position yourself for those types of groups. So that's why I say like, you really need to get to know who it is you're working with because that is going to make things so much easier when you're trying to figure out where they're hanging out at both in person and virtually. Marketing also helps you connect with other people. And so that's like the first phase of marketing is that like, hello, I'm here. Then the next phase of marketing really is that dating phase. Like you have to figure out like, are we a match to work with each other or not? Um, do I like your style? Do I like your philosophy? Do our values align and all that? And so that happens through like social media avenues that happens through email marketing. And that happens just showing up at the same events over and over again. And then marketing also has to showcase your expertise, that you are an expert in whatever type of travel it is. But sales helps people once they have identified or realized that they have some sort of problem, it gets them to your solutions. So it is sales is where you're able to present your offers to your prospects and they can make a decision like yes or no or maybe just not right now. So you're able to present these types of options to those offers as well. And it also helps give people the confidence to work with you. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of overlap, but really if you're thinking of marketing as a visibility and sales as a conversion, that is what the difference is, is that we're just moving them further along so that we can aid them in 
shifting or like closing the gap on what their problem is. So how do you get people closer to making that sale, which is really what the point of all this is. Any sort of marketing avenue that you have, you really want to get them a little bit closer to making a sale. And there's a lot of different avenues. I think the first way, and I think like the traditional way, like if we're thinking about you know, especially we have Black Friday that's coming up. What kind of offers, what kind of promotions, what kind of value adds and bonuses? But aside from those things, you really just have to present yourself and let people know that this is what you assist with. So I like to call some of these things sales events. And this is just a list of five. <laughs> there are so many more sales events out there than just these five, but I feel like these are the probably the most popular types of sales events that are out there. The first one being discovery calls. And I have those there because especially if you're doing a lot of in-person networking, the natural fit for that is to be like, hey, let's hop on a call afterwards. This could also be a coffee chat. And so the difference between a coffee chat and a discovery call, a coffee chat is really just a get to know you session where a discovery call is, I'm interested in your services. I want to know all that you offer and see if it's a fit for what I'm looking for. So discovery calls is a little bit more serious. It's the next step to getting to making that sale. Then we have cruise nights. And I'm sure you can substitute the word for cruise, vacation, trip, expedition, whatever it is that you'd like. I know a lot of people use BDMs for this, which is great. You can also run a cruise night or some sort of promotional event for any sort of trip on your own. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure people are getting a little bit of shivers thinking about that. But you don't necessarily need a BDM to help you out. It's great if they can, but I want you to just remember that the BDM really is the support for the brand and not your business brand, their business's brand. They are there to support you, but it's a different, if they're like, I always use the uh, the term XYZ Cruise. So if they're with XYZ Cruise, they want to get sales for XYZ Cruise. Now, they should be helping you so that you can make more sales, but their overall goal is to help this cruise line and not necessarily your specific business. The third type of event is a vendor event. And fall right now is a really great time to get out there within your community, see what kinds of events are out there. Be selective because not every event is going to be a great event. Again, like where are your ideal clients hanging out at? Are they going to fall festivals right now? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's some sort of other charity work that's going on, or if you're involved with different community organizations, those are types of events that you can like host either tables or booths and really go all out to one, make yourself visible and then keep moving people along to that sales funnel. A uh, lead magnet delivery. I know that's been like a, a big keyword that's that you have heard, especially the past couple years. And especially if you are doing digital marketing, you need to have some sort of lead magnet. If you're posting on social media and you're not leading people anywhere, aka not adding them to your email list, which is why the lead magnet is so important. You're making empty posts, my friend, and I don't want you to be making empty posts. I think this is where a lot of people's frustrations in social media lies because they think if they just post, people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Let me do this. That's not the way that social media strategy really works. You have to lead people down the funnel. It's not that you're posting like, oh my gosh, look at these amazing elephants that I found on an African safari. What's the point of that post? Are you trying to get a follower? Are you trying to get a share? Are you trying to get a like? Are you trying to give away a free guide that will get people on your email list? Because people are more likely to convert on an email list platform than on social media. So uh, that is another what I would call a sales event. And last but not least, definitely a webinar. And I feel like cruise nights and webinars can be similar because they can be the same thing that you're just hosting a webinar for a cruise night or vice versa. So um, the difference between like a cruise night and webinar is really a webinar is just done digitally where a cruise night can also be done in person. You can rent out 
um, restaurant space. You can rent out a movie theater or anything like that. And that's definitely where you would want to get a BDM involved so that they can add and contribute to some of those co-op dollars for you. Uh, I also say this, and I, I say this a bunch, you don't need to do all the things. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I have to do all these things for No, pick one, pick two, maybe three, but the ones that you feel more most confident in and also the ones that kind of like go within your balance of time. I know there's many of you who are working other full-time jobs or just have other life commitments that you're not able to go networking that often. So think of how some of the digital channels and think of how you can utilize some of the digital channels and really maximize them so that you're getting as much reach as possible. So what are kind of the universal steps through this sales funnel. Now there's going to be, of course, like nuance within each one of these because they're different from each other. But if we're looking at this overall, um, I feel like a very good acronym for this that I kind of just made up on the fly while working on these slides is ISPF. So are you using sun protection? <laughs> uh, one, is I, invitation to learn more. So are people, how are you getting people to, in, or how are you inviting people to join a cruise night, a webinar, to get them to add to your email list through a lead magnet? Two, <laughs> the S is for sign up. So how are they going to be able to sign up for this? So one, you've already invited them. That's great. So how do you capture them in your world even further? Three, the P is for pitch. You have to do some sort of pitch. They've signed up for this event, the sales event. And so where is your pitch going to be at? And what are you going to be doing for the pitch? And what kinds of tech do you need for that pitch? And then four is the follow-up because it just doesn't end. You just don't go like, ta-da, look, I did this amazing webinar presentation and you guys came and the end. No, there has to be some sort of call to action during that presentation. There also has to be some sort of follow-up after that presentation. It does not end when the presentation is over. So I, S, P, F, invite, sign up, pitch, and then follow up. So when we're talking about these sales events again, if you're inviting people to a discovery call, that's probably because you've met with them in person. You can go ahead and have them sign up using some sort of calendar link, like let's set up a call together or just going into your calendar and figuring out dates and times. In that discovery call, there's going to be a couple of questions back and forth, but you are in the driver's seat. You have to make sure of that. So at the end of this call, you need to position yourself that you are going to be doing some sort of a, a pitch as long as you want to work with them also. Because I know not all discovery calls make you feel warm and fuzzy and excited to work with people. And then, of course, at the end of the call, follow up. Did they say that they're in it right now? Great. Send off some agreements and an invoice. Did they say they needed some time to wait on it? Okay, great. Set up a follow-up call to just check up on that. So you can see it's not going to be the same for a cruise night or a vendor event or for lead magnet delivery. You know, a lead magnet delivery is sometimes that invite the invite is done through a social media post. So they're intrigued. They want to know a little bit more. So how can they sign up? You have to give them instructions on how they can sign up for this lead magnet. Within the lead magnet, give them the information that they've asked for. And then also at the end, don't forget to pitch what your services are. And then once that has been sent out or has been added to your lead magnet, you need to follow up and that can be like through a welcome email sequence or this can be maybe like two weeks down the line just checking in on how they're utilizing that lead magnet as well. So you can see lots of differences, but also tons of similarities when it comes to setting up your sales events for your business. So let's go a little bit more into that ISPF, that invitation. Uh, how how can we 
like really set this up or what are some of the different ways is what we're going to be going through in the next couple of slides. So one verbal, <laughs> and you saw that kind of as we were going through the discovery calls sample, you're not going to uh, say or be like, yeah, you should add, you should get added to my lead magnet or anything like that in person. That just sounds very, very weird. So just say like, hey, can I connect with you via email so that we can set up a call? Or your email system, which is something that can you can utilize for a lead magnet or if you're doing a webinar or if you're doing a cruise night as well. A social media, maybe you have already signed up to be a vendor event. And so you're promoting that vendor event so people can meet you in person through your social media. Direct mail. This is something that I have done previously. Like if I'm hosting cruise nights has been to send like postcards out to people to be like, Hey, I'm doing this. Would you like to sign up? It's the initial invitation to get them to sign up. So how do you get them to sign up? My favorite form is through Calendly Link, which is a calendar scheduler. Uh, other famous ones that you may have heard of are Acuity and TidyCal. Um, Calendly, I just find super simple to use. And there's a lot of different options and varieties. So it's my preferred method. And I have probably like five or six calendars that it has to look to make appointments in. So uh, it just makes life so much easier if you can have the, these automated processes like a Calendly. The next step of that process, the automation process, is also an email automation. So if someone has signed up to your webinar or to your cruise night, you want some sort of, and when I say automation, you want emails to be sent out based on certain triggers. So if someone has signed up for your lead magnet, they should be going through an email automation funnel that says, okay, send this email out then, send this email out here and remind them that the event's happening today, send this email out so that you're not having to stay on top of all of these emails that are happening. I know that it can like feel overwhelming, like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of steps. But really, like once you get into kind of like the groove of doing all these, it is super, super simple. And then again, you know, when we're thinking about marketing matrix, I think it's also very important to review your meet, M-E-E-T, how you are meeting people. Because if you're meeting di people digitally, this is what you're going to need to do. But it's also going to make your life so much easier. So I don't want you to feel like overwhelmed with the tech. And that's kind of, I have some help <laughs> along coming along at the future slide. So just bear with me a little bit. Uh, then comes to email automation, your landing page, especially lead magnet, cruise night, webinar, those types of things you're going to need to send people. So here's a lot where the backend automation start. Are you hosting a landing page on your website? Is your landing page hosted in your email autoresponder like Flowdesk, Calendly, Constant Contact, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, ConvertKit? Um, sometimes it's easier to embed a landing page onto your, or the form onto your website than it is just to give like a flowdesk.com slash abc123, like that long URL. So um, considering like how, how, how are you going to host the landing page, aka the registration page? If you are hosting something through like a Zoom, there's a registration page feature that you can link up through Zoom. And then last but not least, again, like this is not an extensive list. These are just some of the most popular ways that people can sign up. Uh, QR code, especially if you're sending that postcard in the mail, make it super simple for them. Like don't even worry about them having to like go onto their phone and, and find the link and all that. Just put a QR code on that postcard so they can just scan it and automatically sign up from there. Now the pitch. And really what needs to be honed in is what your planning process is. Um, wh what is kind of like your own methodology, your own framework for planning these types of trips? Uh, what is your planning fee? Like how long do you expect to get back to them? Um, just like really the ins and outs. I was going to break even more down, but I don't want to confuse you. I really want to focus on the different types of avenues that you can 
uh, utilize when you're setting up your sales pitch. So your planning process must be one of the things that you are able to like really secure and button up. Then your presentation, you see that I have some slides over here. What is the presentation that you are going to get ready for your clients as well? If it is something like a webinar or a cruise night, then an information guide. An information guide is going to be amazing, especially if you're utilizing a joint venture partnership and maybe you're at somebody's restaurant. You may have a presentation, but maybe you're just giving away copies of this PDF info guide, printed, not printed, that people can take with them with more information. That's really part of what the pitch is. It lays everything out for them, and then they're able to make a decision by the end of it after going through it or like seeing your webinar or hearing your pitch at a vendor event to make that decision. Yes, I want to make the sale or no, this is not for me right now. If you have a CRM or some sort of itinerary builder that gives you that trip landing page, that is also something that you want to have prepared for this make the pitch area so that it, again, highlights all of the information that somebody needs to make a decision on this and then last but not least, something else that you can utilize, and this is for more one-on-one -on -one, and like if you're doing a discovery call, is some sort of screen recording to close that sale. And then, of course, we have the follow-up. So you've had an amazing webinar, amazing vendor retreat or vendor event, and you're like, okay, now, now here's where a lot of the big type of work happens. And this may take a little bit longer to happen depending on where people are in that kind of marketing funnel. Are they new to you? Have they been following you for a while? Or have they already purchased a trip from you before? So emails and automations, like we had mentioned, kind of like with that lead magnet delivery, send this email as soon as they sign up, send this email the day of the webinar and send this email after the webinar has ended. Um, also, we're going to go back to basics with a phone or a video call. What kind of follow-up can you do to answer some questions? And again, close that sale. And then, of course, any digitally, any sign-up forms, any sign-up pages like that trip booking page with your CRM or your itinerary builder. I would like to say factor in a 30-day planning period and also factor in some support for you. So when I say 30 day planning period, this is the purpose of why Prep for Wave Week happens so early because I want this all set up for you before January even hits. Heck, even before the holidays even begin so you don't have to worry about any of this during the holiday season and you can stand firm that as soon as the clock strikes midnight on the new year, you're like, okay, I am set, I am prepared, inquiries can start rolling in, and I don't have to be afraid or overwhelmed of what may come because of this. Now, when I say support, I specifically am talking about a system. And I call this the sales pipeline, because now that you've got kind of your funnel settled, you've figured out how you're going to meet people, how you're going to connect with them, where you're going to be making that pitch and how you're going to follow up with them. How are you going to keep track of people in the different stages that they're at? And that is through a sales pipeline. Um, I know, and I love, you know, I have my post-it notes here, uh, but we are working smarter, not harder. And so part of that is to utilize some sort of project management tool like a ClickUp, Trello, Asana. There's a lot of different options that you see on the slide here. If going digital is kind of like not in your mindset just yet, or you're like, I'm a paper person, then figure out what that paper planner type system is for you because you need to have a system that tells you what what's written here in number two. It needs to track where they are. So if somebody's new, like, okay, they're at stage one, they're at stage two, they're at stage three. Did you gain the sale? Did you lose the sale? Why did you lose the sale? You know, if you're ho holding all of this information in a project management tool, it gives you data that you can start tracking. And that is going to be the most valuable resource to be making any decisions within your business 
is that data. So I've given out a couple, a couple different lists of some of the different stages and it, you see me kind of like making columns. And so if you're doing like the, the block, uh, that I think of when I think of Trello, there's the different stages, the block stages, or you can do like a list stage over in ClickUp as well. There's a lot of different views for these um, project management tools. So just find the one that really works well for you. I know a lot of people have also been gravitating to Notion, which I am I know of Notion and know how kind of Notion looks, but ClickUp is my preferred because there's so many different things that you can do with ClickUp. So um, where they are in terms of, did they attend an event? Did you schedule a, a discovery call from that event? Did they accept an agreement? Didn't they, did they pay their invoice? And like, once you've gone through that pipeline within your project management tool, go ahead and move them over to a CRM as long as they have closed the sale to keep in touch with them. And then also get the trip planning and everything started out. Alrighty, so I have two tools to help you out with this. The first one some of you may have already received, and that is the Wave Season Starter Kit. So you may have already pre-registered for this when you registered for prep for Wave Week. It will be walking you through that C -mail, C <laughs> sales and email funnel, the email templates and tutorials. I give tutorials for Flowdesk and I give tutorials for MailerLite. The MailerLite is the classic version, but I will update it later this year when I get into like the newer version of MailerLite. There is a 30 day planning calendar within the starter kit. So you know like, okay, I need to be doing this at this time and when. So you can utilize that for November or December so that you can get all of the tasks that are on that calendar kind of checked off and marked off on your list. Then there are also Canva templates. And this is specifically for a webinar sales funnel that you can also use for cruise or trip night. So there is a slide deck that, it's going to look very similar to this format, but there's going to be even like copy and notations on there so that you know exactly what you should be putting on each slide. Uh, there's also a PDF information guide. Again, it is a template. And then I put the exact like photos and notes during the copy of exactly what you should be putting in where. So it really should be as painless as possible to put some of these uh, real tools and resources into effect in your business. There's a promotion postcard template. There's a social media announcement template, a travel joy banner if you do use that for your CRM, and then a Facebook cover because we want to be inviting them on different platforms like social media. So uh, if you haven't already grabbed that, you can, you can scan this QR code that is up here. Um, I am also thinking about doing some sort of like get it done day. So if you have the starter kit, feel free to email me at Rita at SteerYourMarketing.com. If you are interested in some sort of get it done day where everybody that signed up for the starter kit gets together and actually works together and sets aside time to get all these components done so that by the time you're ready to host a webinar in January, you are all set to go. The second invitation that I have for you is the plan your year session. It is formerly known as the marketing strategy planning session, but that was a mouthful and very confusing to spout out at times. So the details of this, it is like the one of the big coveted sessions of the year. It's happening Thursday and Friday, November 16th and 17th from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern each day. Yes. These will be recorded, but you really should be there in person if you can, because again, it is dedicated time already carved out so that you can get this done. I walk you through essentially what I call my goals to action bridge, where we are looking at everything that's happened at 2023, planning out your goals with data. Uh, we're going to figure out what your sales are for 20 or what you want to be selling for 2024. And from all this information, then we can create your strategic and intentional marketing plan. Uh, this year, I have created a workbook. It is going to be available digitally with your 
pass into a plan your year session, but I have also worked on a paper print version that is going on Amazon that should hopefully be available by the time this recording goes live, but I will keep you posted on that with the links and everything as well. So if you'd like to join me for that, uh, you can scan this QR code and all the links will be underneath this presentation as well. So you can have those there. But those are the big things that are coming up at the end of the year is we're, we're already prepping for wave week. So if you haven't already gotten and you need something like the wave season starter kit, make sure that you grab that. And if you are wanting to go in with a plan for the new year, instead of like feeling overwhelmed and behind, you need to plan your year with us in community. Uh, this is a couple of really kind words from other travel advisors that I have worked with. Um, so if you know any of these familiar faces, please go ahead and reach out to them. I've worked with them all through different fams on the rivers in Europe, all through marketing channels and helping them with their marketing strategy for the new year. Uh, last but not least, Thank you for being here. I know like I tend to flood with information. And so I hope this did not overwhelm you too much. But of course, if you are like, I have a million questions, you can join me today inside of study hall. Study hall will be at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And feel free to ask any questions that may have come up in the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Facebook group as well. And uh, if you are not in the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Facebook group, or if you're not on my email list currently, let's keep in touch. You can go ahead, take a screenshot of this one if you would like to. Uh, my email address, uh, my podcast, there is weekly content that comes out every single Friday. You can find me on my socials. Uh, I'm, you know, Instagram and me, we're not having a really great time because it doesn't like keeping my stories and I love doing stories on Instagram. So you may be better off just joining the Facebook group, which is also the name of the podcast, the strategic travel entrepreneur, as I periodically will do some lives in there. And then if you would like to learn about any of my programs, feel free to head over to programs.steeryourmarketing.com. Uh, but that is it for me. Thank you so much much for being here. I hope that this has helped you in setting up your systems for your sales funnel in 2024 and beyond. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye.